In today's video, we are going to be using our acrylic pour paints along with two somewhat unique products to create a really, really cool piece of art. So stay tuned, my friend. That's coming up next. Hello, my friend. Welcome to another video. If this is your first time here, thank you so very much for joining me. So acrylic pouring. We go on YouTube. We see somebody doing a Dutch pour. We see someone doing a ring pour, a straight pour, a swipe, a bloom technique. There's so many different techniques that people do with acrylic pouring. Today, I'm going to thin my acrylic paint down and pour it to do something totally different than what you're used to seeing on YouTube. As far as thinning down my paint, all I'm going to be using is water. I want to make this very easy for anyone to do. Also, I'm going to be using only one color right now, and I'm going to add a little white to this color to get different shades of it, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through step by step. Once this portion of what I do here dries, then we're gonna move on and do something totally unique, totally beautiful, and I hope that you enjoy it. Registration is now open for resin classes. If you are interested in either location, please send me an email Art by Tammy at yahoo.com. So the first thing I need to do is thin down my paint. I'm using Amsterdam greenish blue for my color. And I'm going to put some in the cup. There's really no measured amount to this. I just put a wad of it in the, the bottom of the cup. And, um, you know, just add the water until it gets to the consistency that I'm going to show you in a minute. The more paint you add, the more water you'll have to add, obviously. All right, so in this cup, we just have the bluish green, or greenish blue, I mean. In this cup, we have the greenish blue, but I'm also going to add a little tiny bit of white to get it to be one shade lighter. So I have my blue paint in the cup, and again, I'm just going to add a little bit of white. Not much. I don't want it to be too much lighter. So just a little tip of the stick there into this one, all right? And then we're gonna get the water, and we're gonna add, add it slowly until it's thin. So we'll start with this one first. Just a little bit of water. Mix. A little more. Mix. And you're going to keep doing that until it gets to the consistency that I'm going to show you in a second here. It's really thin, okay, as you can see. It's not leaving a mound, it's just floating off of the stick and going right into the paint, all right? So that's what the, the blue looks like. Because my fluid paint is so thin, I'm going to paint the edges and the side of my canvas just with the regular tube paint. Sometimes when you use thinner paints, the sides will poke through. So that's why I'm doing this. All right, so I have my fluid acrylic paints all ready to go. I have the same color, but I have it lightened a little bit with some white in this cup. And uh, what my plan here is, is to pour paints in a certain area pour the colors in certain areas. I don't want to say too much yet because I want it to make sense when the time comes. So I'm going to try to cover the canvas with 
the darker unaltered greenish blue cover the whole thing and then I'm going to add this lighter color in certain areas only the reason why I'm using acrylic pour paints to do this because I could just do this with regular acrylic paint and a brush I want to give you options to use your paints that you have mixed up to do something other than your typical ring pour dutch pour swipe those paintings okay i want to give you options to use all of these paints and give you some ideas so i'm going to take some of this greenish blue that does not have the white in it and i'm just going to kind of pour it around the canvas like this all right we're going to kind of spread it out with the paintbrush Hopefully I mixed up enough. So before I use the brush, I'm just spreading it out a little bit with my hand, but I wanted to have an extremely thin layer of fluid paint. I didn't want to pour a, a actual base coat because then it would just take longer to dry, but I still needed some paint that was wet for my other colors to move. So that's why I chose just to put a very thin layer of fluid paint. As you see this painting come to life, I want you to start using your imaginations with your fluid paints. They are good for lots of different art applications, not just acrylic pouring. Holy crap. I made it. I'm not worried about the sides because those I'm going to paint afterwards. So I'm not worried about coating the sides. Can't believe I actually had enough. That's awesome. All right. Perfection. So, again, you can see why I did not use just paint out of a tube because you're not going to have, um, I don't know how to explain it. I want my colors to be able to move a little bit on the surface. And if I just paint it with a paintbrush, it's not going to do that. So you have this really, really thin coat of the greenish blue on there. Okay, that's the first step. The next step I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with this lighter color that I mixed up. And I'm going to pour it only in certain sections. All right. So... Here, up like this. Get that there. So I'm going to continue to pour almost like island shapes of uh, puddles of paint. My intention is to create a beautiful ocean scene that has a lot of depth. And doing this first puddle of paint will ensure that there's going to have almost, well, you'll see it's going to create a lot of depth in the painting. So once I get my islands positioned where I want them, I'm going to come in with the blow dryer and I'm going to blow the paint around so that it resembles almost like a mass of land. This will not make sense until the end, but trust me, stay with me to the end and you'll see what I made. And I'm actually so thrilled with the outcome. So I'm just kind of blowing that paint around. I do not want puddles of paint. I just want a thin layer of that color there. And I'm, I'm blowing it in the shape of a mass of land. So the whole purpose of this video is for me to maybe spark some imagination for you. I want you to take those acrylic pouring paints. I want you to do something like a swipe and then once it dries, come in and do what I did here with the spackling paste. Create 
different and unique art. That's what I like to try to do. Of course, I could just take these paints and do another Dutch pour or a ring pour or a swipe even, but I like to kind of think of outside the box. Okay, so next step, we're gonna let this dry. Because the paints were so thin, it took only a day to dry. Now let's have some fun. So this here is lightweight spackling found at Home Depot. A big bucket was $10 and it dries in 30 minutes. Unlike other mediums like crackle paste and uh, modeling paste that you have to wait around hours and hours and they are ultra expensive. So this is a great alternative if you love mixed media work and like to do stuff like this where texture is involved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this spackling paste and I'm going to cover up, oh, 90% of that landmass I just blew out. I'm going to make sure that I leave the edges exposed so that when I'm done, that area will create a lot of depth in my ocean. And that's exactly why I wanted to put that color down first and blow it around so that I would have that outer edge barrier around my land masses and it would create a lot of depth. So now I'm just using the palette knife and kind of stomping it into the wet spackling paste to create texture. Land, as you know it, has hills, it has bumps, so that's why I wanted to do that, just so it wasn't all uniform. Once we are done with that, we let it dry and move on to the next step which is coloring the land masses. And to do that, I'm going to be using a simple acrylic paint. I have some gold and I have a, a green from Golden, which I will show you in a minute here. So you're gonna almost do a dusting motion with the acrylic paint. You're gonna put a very small amount on the tip of your paintbrush and dust it over the texture. Once you complete that first color and have the entire section covered, you're going to come back in with a secondary, almost olive greenish color to create an, we'll say, antiqued look almost. Um, you don't want to have just the gold. You want to create more dimension by adding that secondary color. So you can use a brown or like this, an earthy green, and just lightly dust it over the top of the gold. And it creates this very antiqued, almost distressed look. So here it is after I have done all of the color dusting. And then we're going to move on to the next step, which is outlining where you want these bodies of land to extend underneath the water. So I have the upper land created with the texture paste. I have the shadow of that land underneath by the, the Dutch pour blowing out that I did earlier. I shouldn't call it Dutch pour. It was just blowing out the paint. And now I'm going to create the even deeper depth by using this here acrylic paint and I'm going to sponge it in. I'm going to blend it in using a blending brush. And then on top of that brilliant blue by Amsterdam, I'm going to use something even more spectacular. And that is one of my glow paints. Marine Blue Glow is from Win Modern Art. I've been using them the last few videos. I am in love with these paints because, as I mentioned previously, you're essentially creating two different paintings on the same canvas. You're going to have this view during the day, but at night it's going to be something spectacular that is glowing on your wall. And the best part is, is that you don't need any special lighting to get this paint to glow at night. It literally charges by the daylight. Even the light in your ceiling in your room will charge it. And uh, I cannot wait to show you how this turns out. 
So I'm just going around all of those land masses and I'm creating some more depth with that brilliant blue and my blending brush. Going over the top of the blue with the glow paint and then we're going to let this all dry. Oh, and by the way, I got this idea, which I'm so glad I did this, and you'll see why in the end, to just lightly paint those ridges of the texture with the glow paint. Wait until you see this at night. I am so thrilled with this. So I'm just using my little black light to see where I missed. That's what I was doing there. And now we're going to let that dry. We're going to come back with some glitter for the next step, some clear glue, and we're going to just lightly, and I mean very lightly, apply a little bit of bling to the texture areas only. So very lightly, you don't want a ton of glitter on this because you want to be able to see the artwork that you did on it. You want to see all your pretty colors that you painted. And with glitter, in my opinion, it's more striking when you use less of it. So once you get done with that, we'll let it all dry up. And then I'm going to come back with some KS resin. I'm going to use a few drops of a resin tint. Now resin tints will never be an opaque color. They will always be see-through. This one is called Bombay Blue, I believe. And I get all of my resin coloring products and my wood products from artiststilldeath.com. So if you're in the market for that, I do have a discount for that company. So once I mix this up, I very carefully apply it to the exposed canvas. I do not put it on top of the texture areas, although in some places I decided to do that just so it looked like it had a little bit of water splashing up onto it. I coated using a sponge brush. I used my fingers, whatever I needed to do to get into the little nooks and crannies of that texture border. If you can find your way to Connecticut, I am holding a full day resin class here. And it goes over everything from top coating your own painting in the class to creating a piece of ocean art. We cover everything. Or if you're in Florida, I'll be doing one there as well. So are you ready for the final view? I hope so. wow Look at that. Now tell me that does not look like... Uh, my camera's focusing is horrible. It's just too much beauty for my camera even. Tell me that doesn't look like the underworld or, you know, like... Uh, lava flowing. If I did it in red, it would have been spectacular. I am so happy I decided to, to paint those land masses also. Just the little peaks on them. This is just phenomenal. I'm in love with it. I am absolutely in love with it. So you get this view at nighttime, but during the daytime, you get a whole different view. You know, you get the, the color you get to see this depth that I created. I mean, look at this. I think it's pretty cool. And I hope you do too. So thank you so very much for joining me again. If you are not subscribed, please consider doing so. I release a new video every Sunday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can check out my description for all the coupons I have, information on upcoming classes, and ways to follow me on social media. I love you all. I want to thank you so very much for joining me. And until the next time, my friend, happy pouring. <laughs>